In MathCAD, you can use an Excel component to leverage an existing spreadsheet for your engineering calculations. Let's take a look at how to do that. In another video, I showed how to use the Excel analysis in Creel Parametric to use a spreadsheet for calculations. In this video, I'm gonna use the same spreadsheet. Here I have my lift spreadsheet, and there are two main inputs. There is the angle of attack, and there's also the projected area. Then we have our various calculations. It'll take the angle of attack in order to calculate the coefficient of lift, and then with the coefficient of lift in the projected area, it's going to calculate the lift calculated. So I want to use this. I am going to copy the portion that I want right now. Let me hover over a bunch of cells and then I'll use control C on the keyboard. You can see that we've got the dash lines around the cells indicating that I've copied it. Now I'm going to minimize this. I'll come back to it later on. So here I am in my worksheet. I have a text block up at the top. Let's start off by defining our inputs. And the first one will be alpha, the angle of attack. So I will type the letter A, then by using the keyboard control G, and I'll change it to the Greek letter equivalent. Then to assign a value, I will use the colon equals. And I'm going to use an angle of 15. And I'm going to leave this unitless. Excel doesn't understand units, so my inputs have to be in the correct set of units. And I always like to document as I go. Let's put in a text box, and this will be my angle of attack in degrees. And now let's put in our second input. And so this one is going to be the projected area. I will use a symbol A and then control minus for a subscript and then the letter P for projected area, then colon equals. And this is going to be a value, let's use 160 square feet. But again, I'm not putting units on this because Excel doesn't understand units. So let's throw in a text box to explain this. This is going to be the projected area in square feet. So now I can put in my Excel component. Let's go to the input output tab. Here you can see we have the Excel component in here. There's a drop down, and right now the only active command is insert Excel component, but you can also see that there's insert input expression and insert output expression. But let's insert the Excel component and paste it in here. So then, let me double click on the Excel component. You'll notice that it launches Excel. And then right now in cell A1, I will use Control V in order to paste the worksheet that I had. That's good, let's hit the X to get out of there. And you can see the spreadsheet in there, but we're not seeing the whole thing. So let me grab this and drag it to make it wider and longer. And so there's all the calculations that we have in here. I'm going to take my inputs and assign them to different cells. So in order to do that, let me click somewhere in the inputs area, and then you can right mouse click and hold and insert an input expression. And so we're gonna have Excel, except the cell that I want is this one over here. So let's see, this is A, B, C, D, E, and then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. So this should be E16. Let me edit the cell that this is going to go into. Let's change this to E16. And this is going to be equal to alpha. So I'll type in the letter A and then the keyboard shortcut of control G. And then let's put in another input expression. Again, I find it easiest to do this from right mouse button. And for the input expression, well, I happen to know that this is E12. So let's change this information. Change that to E, put a two in there. And this is going to be equal to my projected area. So I'll type in a capital A, 
control minus to get my literal subscript. Note that this is a literal subscript and not a matrix operator, matrix element. And then take a look. You'll see that 15 already changed up in here. Right now the projected area is 200. When I click out of the math, hey, it updates it to 160 and the resulting lift calculation updated as well. So let's say I want to use the value of this cell in my MathCAD worksheet. Well, again, I can figure out what this cell is. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, and then one, two, three. So that is cell G3. The other way that you can figure that out, hey, just double click, and then you can say, okay, this is cell G3. But let's exit out of there, and then scroll down to the output section. And then I'll click somewhere in there, right mouse button. We can insert an output expression. And we're going to say that I'll make a variable name called lift. And this is going to be equal to, well, right now it's got cell A1 to cell A1. That's how you can grab like an entire matrix. But I said that was G3. And so then I can click outside of here. And if I evaluate the expression, lift is equal to, and you can see that it's 6.22 times 10 to the 3. Hey, let's go to our math formatting and change it from general formatting to decimal. And we've got three decimal places. So you can see that the value that we have here is the same value that was calculated inside of Excel. But again, Excel doesn't have units. That's one of the big downsides of trying to do your engineering calculations in Excel. Hey, let's do something with this. Let's say lift is equal to lift and then multiply by pounds force LBF. And now when I evaluate lift, that's equal to, hey, it's giving it in, unit, in newtons, which is my unit system in here. Let's change to USCS. Here we have it now in pounds force. So this is how you can use the Excel component, if you already have some calculations that are defined inside an Excel spreadsheet and you want to use those calculations inside your MathCAD worksheet. I hope you enjoyed this video. For more information, please visit www.creowindchill.com. If you learned something from this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you like this video, please click the subscribe button and ring the bell to be informed when new videos are uploaded. Thank you very much.